Hello everyone. Today's verse of the day is Exodus 22:2. If a thief is found, if a thief is found breaking in and is struck so that he dies, there shall be no blood guilt for him. But if the sun has risen on him, there shall be blood guilt for him. He shall surely pay. When I when I think about this, this is a very improv verse of the day. And the reason it's improv is because something very traumatic for a lot of people has been closed. Derek Chauvin, the person who killed George Floyd with, I think, I believe three other police officers, has been convicted of murder. Now, I've had a lot of time to think on these things, and I really don't don't ever talk much on on racism and civil rights, but I think this is a good time because one of the things that that I, I noticed with this, it, it, it was such a divide for the country. I remember when George Floyd died, mind you, for my grandkids and kids, if you don't know what happened, George Floyd was videotaped with three different camera angles showing a police officer with his knee in his neck for nine minutes. And I remember seeing that and I was I never thought anything political of it. I was like, wow, that's some pretty racist stuff. And I kept it moving. And I remember coming to work and sharing with some of my conservative, what I would call Christian friends about what happened with with Mr. Floyd and it was like, man, I have never seen anything so racist and they were very quick to defend the cops actions against George Floyd and it shocked me I literally lost a lot of people who I considered friends I, I never told them that I lost them but I, I really did when there were things that were said like as well he did drugs at a time or he had a criminal past I was like, what does that have to do with the cop being judge, jury, and executioner? And then the way I saw politicians and people on the radio talking about George Floyd, it, it became very sad. I even remember when Candace Owens, and for my future kids and grandkids, she was a, a black lady who, who has a lot of conservative values, she was saying, why do you want to make George Floyd a martyr? He's a bad guy. It all became criminalizing George Floyd. Now, mind you, at this time period, Black Lives Matter was a huge movement and All Lives Matter was a huge movement. When they, both of those movements started going out, first thing I said when I saw Black Lives Matter, I was like, that's racist. Why are we saying Black Lives Matter? It's, it's different if you say Black Lives Matter too. You okay, kiddo? You okay? You all right? It's okay. It's different when you say Black Lives Matter too. But to say Black Lives Matter, it would be the same if, if, if I heard it from another race. White Lives Matter or something. We don't do that. Just like... If we're integrating, we're integrating. Just like black entertainment television. I've always thought that was wicked. Why would you do that? I wouldn't like to hear something about white entertainment television. It, it, it makes no sense to me. And so at first I was like, well, all lives matter. And then I saw what they were doing with the all lives matter movement. Instead of saying, man, there are some racial injustices happening to some of our brothers Let's start, since we don't think that Black Lives Matter is a good slogan, let's say all lives matter, but defend those people. Let's say George Floyd died injusticely. All lives matter. No. All lives matter became George Floyd died. All lives matter. Now look at this person, too. He's a different race. It all started deflecting whoever, oh, um, Breonna Taylor died, died. But guess what? Look at this this person. He, he's white. He died. Or this cop. He died. It all began to deflect against some of our racial problems. So all lives matter became racist. Even to me, who definitely believes that all lives matter, 
when I would hear people say it, because I remember some, some people, some of my coworkers, told me that racism doesn't exist. The systematic racism is all in our minds. No, the reason it is brought out so much into this 21st century is because everybody has a phone. There's cameras everywhere. We cannot hide it no more. And I, I wrote about this. I really did. I got to bring it up. So the thing that I wrote, discrimination over time has morphed in the past until the Civil Rights Act is more of a binary evil, black and white in terms of color, not race. It was simple. They don't like them. They call them words. They hang them. It was obvious. Through the changes of hearts and laws, it had to become more subtle, and shades of gray were mount intent were purpose. To some Bible for racist mind, they have to be very careful with how they go about the racism because the way laws have come through. So they have to make systems and make sure that they have the certain amount of quotas. They don't have to be every minority that they like. They just got to leave out certain ones. They have to be smart. It has to be games of chess these days. Yet now, mostly when discrimination does occur, is a spectrum of various colors where people do not realize what they are doing until it is too late. And I continue, and then you have a spectrum of color discrimination where it's not so blatant. You may be doing racist actions and not even know it. You may just see someone treat a certain person discriminatory, and now you do it. You hear their word of mouth and now you're treating them that way. They ignore him as they talk to him. They say he's unconfident. Now you treat him unconfident. Racism has morphed over time. Not to say binary racism or shades of gray don't exist. And that's what I think that sometimes we need to realize today. We have been, a lot of us, have been experiencing racism, but it hasn't been to the level of George Floyd. But guess what? Now that we have the cell phones and things, those cases where there are levels of George Floyd, the actual binary racism are now coming up. But even if we get rid of the binary racism, we as a people, we still have a long way to go to get rid of the various shades of gray. And I'm not just, I'm talking, yeah, we gotta get rid of the shades of gray and the spectrum of color racism. And do I think it's gonna happen? Well, at least it can happen within you. Till, till Yeshua comes back, it won't happen for all. But as far as I'm in control, I will check my heart and make sure that anything that somebody does against me that I don't hold it against an entire race. And I hope you do the same for you. Now back to what I was saying earlier. So when I finally see, when I finally see <sighs> Chauvin, Derek Chauvin, the cop who did this, I felt relief. I know it's not the solution to the problem, but I knew that there would be more riots, there'd be more protests. I don't agree with the riots. I don't agree with the politicizing of people being injured and hurt and killed racially. I don't believe in, in making it a party issue. It should never be a party issue. Now I don't prescribe to all lives matter, black lives matter. I prescribe to Yeshua's life matters. Jesus's life matters. And Jesus loves all. He loves everyone. If I'm gonna say all lives matter, I'll say it different. Every life matters. Because all lives matter has been tainted. Something that was to be good has been tainted by people wanting to make it seem like it doesn't exist. No, racism does exist. Racism will always exist until Jesus comes back. And when I say that, I'm not saying it just exists amongst a certain majority. It exists amongst black people, Hispanic people, Asian people. Arabic people, Jewish people, you can, we all can be racist. We all can bite into the, to the stereotype. But if somebody is experiencing racial discrimination, I'm not going to turn their head and point to another, 
another gender or another race that's experiencing that, let's focus on that situation. That's evil. That is evil. And I guess when I say this, Yeshua's life matters. He is the only one who has not sinned. He is the only one who never did any harm. I've done harm. Everyone's done harm. Yeshua's life matters. But I am glad that Derek Chauvin was convicted. And that blood guilt verse that I wanted to share, perhaps for Derek Chauvin's actual soul, it's good that he did not perish, that he did not die of his sin. He gets time in prison. He gets time to think about what he's done, perhaps to even be saved. And that's all I would ask. That's all I would ask. This is a tough subject. The only additional thing I want to tell you is you do not have to think with the crowd. You do not have to pick a side. Remember, there's always God's side. There's always Yeshua, Jesus' side. You don't got to subscribe to black lives. You ain't got to subscribe to all lives. If they're both wrong, they're wrong. You don't have to prescribe to a political party. If they're both wrong, they're wrong. Be a free thinker. Love your brother. Put your pr person in your brother's shoes. And one more thing. A lot of these cop brutalities. I see so many people excusing these things, finding any possible way to make the cop not the problem. They will victim blame left and right. I've even had someone tell me that they would arrest a black person or have two people rough hand and put their knees on a black person because American blacks are stronger than white people. That's evil, man. I'm a human being. I don't care if I have muscle. Treat me with dignity and respect. And these are people that I thought were possibly my friends. If you are one of them listening today, search yourself. I sincerely say search yourself. Try and put yourself in my shoes for one day maybe. Quit victim blaming. Quit trying to make evil cops that are, are, are malignant and horrible at their job using pulling out guns instead of tasers, supposedly. Quit trying to make excuses for them. Quit trying to make excuses for people putting knees and necks for nine minutes. I'm happy to express these concerns. And now... I look forward to going back to the gospel. We pull up, not out. I won't fight against one side by becoming extremist on the other. We always pull towards Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Lord, it, 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 these subjects you know are, are really close to my heart, but I always choose you. I am much more than a black. I'm made an image of you, Father. These people that I talk to, even the ones who do not like me, they're made in the image of you. Please show them the commonality that we both share. In Yeshua's name, I pray. Amen. Goodbye.